So this course is, uh, is for telecommunication and networking uh, PR pathway. I will be happy to share my experience with you guys. Uh, and joining me, Kostya Kazmin, registered migration agent from Adelaide branch. So this session is going to be about uh, PR pathway, networking, engineering and telecommunication courses. I want to draw a distinction. We are not going to uh, discuss about the higher education like bachelors or uh, bachelors of telecommunication and engineering uh, courses. Those are the skill level one professional uh, occupation. Uh, because today's session is going to be a trade and vocational uh, occupation. So, so I can tell you know about. So who is the techni telecommunication technician? So it is basically a layman term who is helping to set up your broadband connection in today's digital world, as well as someone who has IT skills so they can pen design and configure telecommunication and networking system for company organization or locality as well as area so telecommunication uh, technician are in huge dem demand as australia is increasing its capability when it comes to the wireless broadband as well as high speed of 5g network so people who have capability in telecommunication technical aspects are great future in demand so, so next I can tell you what are the career outcomes uh, after doing this course. So I have listed some uh, career outcome occupation courses. Well, first is telecommunication networking design, telecommunication network manager, telecommunication network planner. So telecommunication network planner and telecommunication technical officer uh, Officer find a place as MLTSS and STOSL. So, but generally you can find a job in senior special technician, technical, uh, uh, you can say telecommunication, uh, optical network manager, te telecommunication technologist. But generally you can find a job in all the uh, occupations. Telecommunication network planner is which is the most common entry level. So where most of the people get job after completing advanced diploma course, moreover telecommunication uh, technical officer. So of course, when it comes to the telecommunication uh, engineers, you must complete it bachelor's level qualification or you must have equivalent experience if you don't have formal bachelor's or master's level. So telecommunication as a growth of industry is directly proportional to the career opportunities in the telecommunication occupation so the next slide is uh, what happen if you don't follow the right course so for you to qualify as a telecommunication network planner or telecommunication technical officer and you are thinking about to giving a career a shot it is very important to select the right course it should be registered for two years for the skill assessment uh, which um, Kostya will discuss about the skill assessment as well uh, later on so now I can if you select uh, the course which is only for one year so might be you may not get skill assessment uh, uh, after completing the course. So with the minor specialization in telecommunication, that is incorrect course as well. So you must choose the right course on the student visa 500 subclass. So the next course is providers wet. So so the basically there are multi, multiple pro providers available in overall Australia. If we talk about the Brisbane and Melbourne, Milcom Institute is a good college, uh, Brighton College, Gamma College, Perth and Adelaide is Skill Australia, Victorian Institute of Technology, Sydney Parramatta. In Sydney, uh, uh, there is uh, one uh, like um, college in Windsor, New Era Institute that is in comes in the regional area, Brighton Pacific. The, the, so the course fee would be around 19 to 22 thousand dollar approximately, and there are multiple intakes like monthly intakes available. So this course is for two years. The course fee is $22,000 approx for two years. So now we talk about. So, 
So this course, uh, you can do fast track on 485 if those who have completed their uh, principal course on 500 student visa and uh, they didn't uh, get uh, completed their course and didn't get the PR option on that course, they may choose a fast track option on 485. This course, you may take the fast track option as well. So this course is really good for the future uh, career pathway as well. So now I go to the uh, talk about the job trends in this course. So this uh, this data from National Skill Survey when it comes to the telecommunication trade worker classified under the NSCO group along with the electro technology and telecommunication trade worker. Uh, out of 15, the trade worker occupation that was available in this field, you can see up to 20% has a strong demand. When it comes to the future next five year projection, as up to 80% of occupation has moderate demand and there is a no soft uh, demand, which means in the next five year projection in terms of job markets looks very healthy and thriving. So 80% of job listed within the category of telecommunication worker having a strong to moderate demand. Now, if you talk about the skill shortage, you can see this from skill priority list occupation. If you can see and scope. Uh, we can go to the next slide actually. So now uh, if you can see the ENSCO occupation list for cabler data communication, telecommunication cable joint, jointer, telecommunication lines worker, telecommunication technician. So when you look at every state, there is a shortage across Australia. Job market is also thriving occupation as well. So I can see. So then the next slide. So overall, uh, we can uh, if we can see in the result by state territory, New South Wales has the highest proportion of the electro technology and telecommunication trade. Uh, it's all about short is 80% followed by the Northern Territory 70%. So most of the remaining uh, state and territory, it's 50 to 50, 61%. So it should be noted that the variation across the state and territory, at least the part reflect the difference in the stakeholder input received. So yes, we can see, say that in the conclusion, you can kickstart your career is in one of the booming industry. If you are already working and want to improvise your skill and want to hand over hands on over the trending technology here, we can help you. So the next part for the future stay in Australia and uh, migration pathway. So Kostya will uh, continue this session. Thank you. Hey Kostya, Thank how are you? you? You can just. I'm on freeze. Very good. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for this interesting presentation. Before I go to mine, I just wanted to ask. So what is the fast track option that people do on a 485 of this two year telecom course? Is it condensed to one and a half years or even shorter? So basically this course is for two years. So if the person, if the student is com has completed uh, two years of study and uh, uh, and holding 485 visa, if, uh, if uh, the student has completed like masters of business, and uh, now they don't have any like career pathway in Australia. They may they may do like uh, this course on 485 on fast track option like for one year. OK, so you can yeah. do it in one year. Yeah, so basically oh. this course is for two years. But yes, those students who are holding 485, then uh, they may can go for the fast track option that is for one year. So you're but just paying the the, but all the fee, 20 plus K, but you can condense it in one year, basically, yes, right? Yes, exactly, okay. yes. So, but in the PRISM, the course is for two years. Yeah, but it, on 485, you can ask the provider to fast track it, right? Yes, we need to so ask the provider real, for the fast track. It's common for the provider to agree to fast track it, right? Yes, right, exactly. Okay, fantastic. Well, that's very. that's perhaps the fastest option that you can have. Because yeah. even for if you do a construction trades course, that would be 
minimum one to two years course plus one year job ready program, which means two to three years total. Whereas for this option, you'd finish in one year because you don't have, well, you don't need work experience for skills assessment, which I'm going to talk about a bit later, which means that it's a very, very, very um, competitive option. Thank you for that. Um, wonderful. Um, um, let me um, just share my screen and my presentation and hope it all goes well, just a sec. Okay. I'm backing this up for a colleague, by the way. <laughs> I did my own um, today yes. in the morning, and this is a um, upload a copy. Uh, yeah, um, thanks, whatever. Um, so this is a, a backup for a colleague. Um, so I hope you'll like the presentation. I didn't do it. Yeah. It's a colleague's presentation. Yeah. I wasn't able to connect today. We, we can anyway. see your uh, presentation already, yeah. Anyway, nice. um, okay, look, um, so as, as migration um, agents part of the job, um, I'm going to look at the classification of occupations, um, the so-called Bureau of Statistics classification, whether we like it or not, this system still exists in Australia and is, is, is perhaps going to stay, the so-called ANZECO codes. And roughly uh, what we have on the skills list are um, two sets of occupations. The first set is starting from two six, telecommunications engineer and telecommunications network engineer. Um, and then the another set of occupations are telecommunications field engineer, network planner, and technical officer or technologist. These are starting from three one, showing that it's a different uh, qualification level. Okay. So the ones that are a 2 6 category are the engineering professionals. In other words, they are engineers. They design, construct, and install service and support equipment systems and facilities. Importantly, so I always tell people if you're trying to understand if you're doing an engineering job or not. Ask yourself, do you actually design anything? If you don't design, if you just install or maintain, you're not an engineer. If you do design, then you are an engineer. That's important. That's an important difference. So 263311 Telecom Engineer designs, importantly, and develops systems, devices, and products needs a bachelor degree yeah so it's a skill level one occupation which requires a bachelor degree or higher and you can do all sorts of visas with it because it's in the medium long term list you can do one at nine one ninety four and one um as well as all employ employer sponsored visas a nice occupation Then the 263312 is the telecom network engineer plans, designs, and monitors complex telecom networks and associated broadcasting equipment. And again, because it's same starting from two six, it's a skill level one, at least a bachelor degree occupation, also suitable for all of the visas options uh, mentioned earlier. And alternative titles that are out there in the market may be communications consultant, specialist, telecom consultant, or telecom specialist. Now we go to, we were dealing with group two, six, remember people who need degrees and are at skill level one. Now the group three, one is other people. They are telecommunications technical specialists, not engineering people anymore, specialists. And they develop, monitor and carry out technical support functions for telecommunications networks and install computer equipment, computer systems or microwave, telemetry, multiplexing, satellite, and other radio or electromagnetic wave communication systems. So importantly, they don't design the systems anymore. That's the main difference from engineering. 
because these people in group three one are normally not skill level one people. <coughs> um, OK, so telecom field engineer skill level two requires not a bachelor's degree, but AQF, Australian Qualification Framework, Associate Degree, Advanced Diploma, or possibly even Diploma. And uh, this person plans, designs, commissions, and monitors complex telecom networks and associated equipment. Uh, can work for any of the visa options. So also very, <coughs> very, very good for um, all uh, options that require a skills assessment, like 189, 190, 491. 4.4 in blue sponsored visa requires a skills assessment. 186 requires a skills assessment. Also good for 482 that does not require a skills assessment. Um, so nice, nice pathway. Um, telecommunications network planner. Also a skill level two occupation. Yeah, everyone in category three one. It's not the category two six that we dealt with earlier. Everyone in category three one is going to be skill level two. Plans the development of customer access telecommunications network infrastructure. Also suitable for all visas. So an excellent option also. And that's where this diploma um, that Manfred spoke about later comes handy because this course actually prepares you for this job especially can be especially attractive with the fast track option i believe um as may work well for people who completed a bachelor's or a master's are on their 485 but for some reason cannot find say you've you've done a bachelor's or a master's which is for a vet assess occupation and you can't find a job that would take you to a vet assess skills assessment and then you do this thing for a year or two and get your skills assessment without work experience, doesn't require work experience to do this. So very, very attractive option. Um, another three one category occupation is the telecommunications technical officer or technologist also in the MLTSSL, that's what we call the long-term list, medium long-term list. So a very attractive migration option. Special carries out special design and support functions in telecommunications engineering, including optimizations and performance monitoring of telecom networks, diagnosis and repair of faults, and the selection and installation of equipment. Again, skill level two, <coughs> so it doesn't require higher education. Again, the diploma Montreal has been talking about can be very handy. Again, all visa options are available. Okay, the important thing, how do you get skills assessed? It's understanding how you um, go into it, what categories are um, available and what qualification you have, choosing the correct assessment pathway, lodging um, an application and getting hopefully a positive outcome. If you do it with us, you will um, definitely get one. Okay, <clears throat> so, Generally, when you go to Engineers Australia, you may have different options. Um, not only after completing studies here in Australia, but you might have completed your engineering studies abroad as well. Yeah, so um, we need to remember that there are so-called accredited qualifications. These are the Washington, Sydney and Dublin um, Accords. So um, check um, on the um, Engineers Australia uh, website what the accords are and then go to relevant accords websites and check your qualification or we can do it at, at an appointment if you'd like. And if it is in one of the accords, you will get easier skills assessment. You don't have to do, write it to write the CDR, which is called um writing the, the three career episodes as we also call it yeah you don't have to do cdr if you're in one of these accords um you can also use a qualification checker on the international engineering alliance website to check if your qualifications are accredited if you completed qualification in australia importantly and it's listed on the engineers list um, of accredited programs then you apply directly through the Australian qualifications pathway. Okay, 
And the options that are available as assessment categories are professional engineer, engineering technologist, engineering associate, and engineering manager. We haven't spoken much about engineering manager today. It's not a very popular category. It is someone with really a lot of experience. Um, let us know if you're the one, but normally we, it's, it's quite rare that we do assessment for engineering manager because of, these people are um, not easy to find, to tell the truth. But professional engineer is anyone at bachelor's level degree or higher. Um, um, an engineering technologist would be somewhere, um, a technologist associate would be, uh, technologist would also be skill level one, whereas engineering associate would be exactly the case when you have done a deep, um, um, an advanced diploma. So um, the course uh, that Manpreet is telling you about, um, you would be getting uh, skills assessment as um, an engineering associate in exactly this categories. Um, so <clears throat> again, the four assessment pathways are either having Australian qualification or being in the Washington Accord, Dublin Accord, Sydney Accord. So Australian qualification easiest and cheapest. Being in the Accord, slightly a more expensive assessment is still good because you don't have to do the CDR, don't have to write the three career episodes. Um, and you can apply via the Australian qualification pathway also in a very simple assessment. If you have an ASCA recognized Australian associate degree or advanced diploma in engineering and you're looking for a role in the engineering associate. In other words, what I'm trying to say is um, if you've done um, associate degree or advanced diploma in telecom, as this is what Manpreet has been telling about the course, if you've done that course, um, it's an Australian course, no um, need to have any accreditation of that as long as you want to be assessed as an engineering associate. The course doesn't need to be accredited, doesn't need to be an Australian accredited course if you want assessment as an engineering associate. That's very important because basically any of the course providers that Mandreed has shown in different areas of Australia would be able to teach you exactly the course that you would need for a positive skills assessment. However, if it's not engineering associate level and you have a qualification that is only provisionally accredited, um, you would have to do a CDR. Um, that's the CDR pathway, the three careers um, episodes. Um, and currently there are 31 engineering occupations. Um, you just choose one of them from the drop down list or ask, uh, ask us for help if you need. Um, any help. Now, um, if your assessment is successful, both your occupational category and your engineering occupation will be on the letter. So what are the fees? These are the fees for the accords, as you can see somewhere mid-range, I'd say. These are the CDR fees. These are the most expensive fees. The CDR is always more expensive because you have to write the three episodes and someone has to check them. And this is the way to go, the best option. <laughs> After you've paid for an Australian qualification, at least you get something. Um, you get good fees for skills assessment, very good fees, fees. You can see them now. And also look, um, if you're doing um, an Australian qualification skills assessment, it can be completed in two to, two to four weeks. Um, if you fast track Australian qualification, um, can possibly be even faster. If you do one of the accords, couple of months, if you do a CDR, three, four months at least, maybe slightly longer, but then you have the fast track option. You can ask them to fast track. If you fast track a CDR, if you fast track <coughs> the career episodes, you can have them done in possibly one and a half months to two months, possibly. Yeah, um, you know that there are special options of fast track ass assessments, which end 30 June, but then read carefully, there is a disclaimer, 
what these are. In my opinion, it's not exactly the migration skills assessment, it's an employment skills assessment, which you may need for um, future outcomes in terms of employment, but not for migration itself. And it's ending 30th of June, 2023. Anyway, I'm not sure if you guys would be rushing to do any of these. Okay, and there's, uh, as part of that, there's also an experiment by the Australian government um, running from uh, Feb 22 to 30th June. Um, free applicant, free assessment for eligible applicants. But again, guys, read the disclaimer. You need to have your visa granted already, either family or partner or refugee. So you need to have PR already, basically. Yeah, so I'm not sure this would apply to many of you. Just, just double checking, yeah, because when people say a free assessment and still serious, so whatever you might go and apply tomorrow. But I'm just telling you, this is for someone who already has a partner visa, or refugee visa, or a family visa. So um, your PR is sorted. You're thinking how to get employment, and they offer you a free assessment. Yeah, not sure if most of our audience are interested in that now. Um, okay. Um, any questions are very uh, welcome. Um, and I'm very thankful for the audience, for your presence, uh, for your interest, um, and, and the, the lovely organizers and uh, my uh, lovely colleague who has done the first part of this presentation. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kostya. It's a very informative presentation. And uh, uh, we know that uh, you're a little bit uh, tired today, but uh, still. Uh, finish your presentation very well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Manu. Thank you, Kosia. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lee. Thank you. Yeah. And now uh, is the Q and A session. Um, everyone, if you have any question, please uh, feel free to leave here. Uh, we will try to answer all of the question. Um, but I saw some questions here already. So, uh, Manu, uh, I think the first one is for you. So, are you ready? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, uh, this is from Nitesh. I saw you already reply on chat box, but uh, yes. you can add more information if you want. And uh, he asked about uh, the course. So, is it a diploma or advanced diploma? So, thanks, Nitesh, for asking this question. So this session is all about the vocational course and the course which I like uh, talked about earlier, that is Advanced Diploma of Information Technology, major in telecommunication networking. So we have already like discussed about this course and you can do this course on 485. But if you are holding the 500 student visa, then you must have 92 weeks of your study uh, to apply your 485 visa and this course is for basically for two years. So advanced diploma of information technology. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's that's great. Uh, so Nitesh also have another question, uh, but uh, he asked about the fast track course for 45 visa. And uh, yes, we do have the option. So if you want uh, to know more this option, you can reach uh, Manpreet uh, for more. And um, the next part I think is for Kosia. And he asked if we complete the course in one year, do we get the skill assessment for PR? If you complete a course in one year, well, of course, look, um, whatever the provider allows you to do means the provider has given you the same units. So the provider gives you a completion letter of the same course not a shortened course or not anything ineligible, yeah? You get an Australian qualification that if you don't meet the requirements, you don't get, right? So if the provider has decided to fast track it in your favor, that's absolutely fine and doesn't change it. Okay, so I hope that uh, Nitesh is happy with uh, this uh, answer. So the next one is from uh, Mansour. Uh, Mansa says, I'm on 45 visa, which is left for a 2.5 year, a, a two years and uh, four months. Uh, may I know any trade course on fast track for one year in which no experience is necessary and can apply for skill assessment right after completing it after one year? Thanks. So uh, Manu, do you have any uh, options for him? 
Yes, definitely. So, hi, Mansoor. So, if you are holding a 485 visa and wanted to do like fast track option, yes, definitely you can do advanced diploma of information technology and there is a lot more other options are available. Like uh, before expiring your visa, you can do uh, advanced diploma of civil construction, advanced diploma of information technology. You can do so at four in cookery, uh, floor and tiling. That's the fast track option. And uh, if you do advanced diploma of information technology and uh, advanced diploma of civil construction for one year, you may get a uh, skill assessment directly after completing the course. You may not require any experience for that. If I'm right, Kastya. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. If, if he has two plus years, yeah. it's fine for him to complete a fast track and then no experience required for that yeah. advanced diploma. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you, Manu. Manu, you yeah. already got the answer for this. Thank you, Manu. Thank you, Kosia. So the first, uh, the next one from James, and uh, this is for Kosia. Uh, he asked, do I need provisional skill assessment for 45 visa after this July yes. and how to do it and how long will it take and PR options in uh, WA? OK. Um, so <clears throat> I'm afraid the question is too broad. We don't know which engineering specialization is done. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but currently, um, whenever you go um, after 1st July, whenever you go for a <clears throat> for a five, you would have to be doing. Uh, sorry, yeah, <clears throat> sorry for a graduate work stream for a five, you would have to be doing the skills assessment. So the skills assessment is back. Engineers Australia can do it. Um, and with regard to PR, I would very much recommend him to wait what WA showed <clears throat> in the new financial year, because we really don't know. We really have no idea at the moment. Um, all would depend on where he's completing his course, what his current course is, and stuff like that. OK, sure. So um, I think uh, you will make a short video uh, to release this information when you have the information uh, in the new financial year. <laughs> we I might saw a lot of, yeah, that. I saw a lot of your videos. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. OK, yes. um, yeah, um, I'm not to do. <laughs> um, um, I tend to I want to focus <clears throat> on South Australia more than other states. But Western Australia is not too bad, so we might be doing something about that eventually. It's, it's our main competitor. It's even been recognized by, I think, by the management of the South Australian Migration Program as our main competitor. That exactly Western Australia, not any other state, is our main competitor. So we might want to do a video about that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we will ask the SA office to, to do it. Um, OK, thank you. Uh, so for the next one, uh, this is from uh, Sukpam. And uh, the question is, if I apply for an extension now, will I get it straight away? Is there any fees? And if I apply now, will it get extended to 2027, considering my visa is to 2025? Uh, no. Of course, yeah, but uh, yeah. Don't do it now. <clears throat> Don't do it now. That would be very unreasonable. If you get an extension now, your current 45 will cease. So you will just lose what you have already and you will get the same that you have already. If you applied mid 2023, apply for a <clears throat> 45 extension, you lose the current 45 and get the new two years, you get the same thing. Um, and you lose your opportunity for a future extension. It doesn't make sense. And wait till the end. I think this extension option is for the future to come it hasn't been designed for until tomorrow you know so it will be there most likely so stay on your current 485 till the end almost till the end and then extend only in this way you'll be able to last until 2027 okay okay i hope that uh Sapam is listening to watch uh, the answer and is happy with that and if you need uh, more you know suggestions or consultation please uh, read costia i will uh 
post their emails here so you can send an email to Kostya and Mandu if you have uh, more questions or if you have more queries about this. And uh, we move to the next one from Amir. I have a Washington accredited BSc degree specialized in electronics and telecommunication engineering. However, currently I am working as a software engineer and no telecom related job has done. Can I assess my occupation as a telecommunication engineer only from my degree? So Kosia, uh, what do you think? <clears throat> you can, uh, but the question uh, that will come up, two questions will actually come up. First question is, you get it assessed through the accord. Yes, that's right. That's but, fine. Yeah. You get a positive outcome, but what do you do with, software engineering. With software engineering, yeah. my question is, I mean, perhaps your next step is do state nomination, yeah? So my concern would be, you have an engineering skills assessment from Engineers Australia, but you do a job from ACS, a completely different job. The, the problem with that is that you do not work in the skills assessed occupation. You do not work in the nominated occupation. My question is, how do you apply for <clears throat> state nomination of any state if you don't work in the nominated or closely related occupation? That would be your major problem. Yes, that's right. <clears throat> you can get the skills assessment, but I don't actually know what you do next with it. That's the problem. Sure. So, um... Ami, if you have uh, more questions or if you want to have uh, a clearer question or more on this uh, query, please uh, reach Akosia. I posted his email there already, so you can send him an email for more of information. Uh, he's happy to answer all of the questions or can, you know, suggest you uh, any kind of options. Uh, so we move to the next one. It's from end. Uh, one question, please. So the course providers mentioned in the presentation before. They do have fast track option for four or five visa. Uh, yes, uh, Manu, please uh, answer this question again. Uh, and yes, uh, so and definitely there is a lot more other providers as well who are providing the fast track option on four eight five. But the but like uh, with which I have mentioned in the presentation, the providers which I mentioned in that uh, presentation that they provide the fast track option as well. So definitely, if you wanted to do this course on fast track option and holding four eight five visa, then uh, you can just contact us. Definitely, we can help you in that. Sure. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so I think uh, that's all the question we have for this session. Uh, so Kostya and Manu, do you have any uh, information to provide or do you have any suggestions more for this course? So, um, yeah, I do. I would like as um, a finalizer, say one important thing that I hope will be heard by the applicants. Um, every day, or at least every two days, <clears throat> I'm contacted in Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever by the so-called CDR writers. They call themselves CDR writers. People who do career episodes for other people. Yeah. So a lot of people, when they come to Australia with an offshore degree, they say, ah, I didn't work as an engineer. I have no work experience. I also don't remember my studies at university. I'm not sure I can uh, have three episodes from university study, blah, 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 blah. And so they hire these people and these people want to entice me and other migration agents to work with them so that we <clears throat> connected these clients with CDR writers who would write these career reports to them, career reports, study reports, or whatever, the three reports required. Don't ever do this. I tell to these people, please never contact me again, because what you're doing is unlawful. The CDR writers, 
if you open the Engineers Australia manual, it clearly says, I think either in red or in bold, that CDI writing, career episode writing, is only your own individual writing. Mm. That doesn't apply um, if you take um, a course of study. Uh, you don't need to do all these CDRs. But if you have a foreign degree, you do have to do the CDI report. Only your writing. If we find out that this writing is copy pasted, stolen, plagiarized, written by someone else, we'll ban you. Oh, wow. Uh, Do the clients listen? Not always. Not always. And I've had a case when the client was banned for three years. So imagine you can't get your skills assessment for three years. Because these people, you, these CDR writers you go to, they are never responsible for what they do. You can't expect someone responsible for what they do if, if the whole work they do is unlawful. Yes, it's logical, right? Why would someone be doing an unlawful job? Why would someone be against the law and regulation you, doing something they shouldn't be doing? And I've had a ban from one of the clients already, and he said, ah, I think I gave my CDR reports to one of the other people. And look, I eventually know what it is. It's as simple as that. <clears throat> they do control C, control V, ah, mechanical engineer. They copy the same reports, change a couple of lines and sell that to you. This is what their job is. This is what they do. Don't ever go to them. Believe me, it's better if you have your own reports. They might be not as ideal as you would want them to be, but they will be good reports because they are genuine, because they are your career episodes, because Engineers Australia can then ask for your student reports from back from uni to see if you are lying or not, because there will be no plagiarism, because it will be your own creative thought. So this is very important. Do not ever communicate or buy anything from CDI writers, because the uh, Engineers Australia manual uh, bans any such people from existence. Do not do this. This will serve very badly in your future career because these people never, never will do what they commit to doing. They will always produce your piece of rubbish that will lead you into a very serious disaster. Don't do it. Your work needs to be genuine. Being genuine in all your dealings with the Australian government is the only way to do the right thing. And this is the only way that will take you further to your PR. If you start your PR from scams and working with scammers, it's not going to take you anywhere. So whenever you come to me to get your skills assessment and any migration agent within this office, we would tell you, <clears throat> you would also ask us about the scope of service that we provide for the CDR. We would tell you, we can give you instructions. We can check what you've written, whether it complies with ACS guidelines. <clears throat> we may say, hey, we think there is, uh, uh, you need to add your engineer, individual engineering activity or explain what you've done or, or explain how you work collaboratively or add a drawing, add, uh, add a calculation, add something else. But we will never be doing this work instead of you. Career episodes are all your entire work. You must do it yourself not to get into trouble. That's my very important message because judging by the scale of contact uh, that the CDR writers are trying to establish with me every day, <coughs> I think they have a lot of contact with you and well as well. And this is where, what you should not be doing. Yeah, it's it's really good to know, Kostya. I also saw a lot of profiles, uh, CDR writers, and they use beautiful women's uh, pictures as a profile. <laughs> it's a, it's yeah. sexist in itself. They think that mm -hmm. most engineers are men. So sexist in itself. You see, when you're a fraudster, even your approach is wrong. Yeah, that's that's yeah yeah good to know. Good to know. Thank you for your sharing. And uh, the time is almost up, but we still have two questions. So can you please uh, answer uh, fast um, for these two questions? Um, this is from also from Supam, and uh, he asked, what can we expect from this uh, 
upcoming year for migration is going to be difficult or easy for PR? OK. <clears throat> so the last time it was easy. Was mid 20th century. When you could come to Greece on a ship and could mm -hmm. tell, hey, people just jump on a ship, we're going to take you to Australia. That's what I recently heard Greek people tell me uh, who are 80 years old, 90 years old, who've lived here all their life. That's the last time it was easy, right? 50 years ago, you just jumped on a ship, they checked that you were from Europe and you came. That's I think the they must take a flight, not a ship. <laughs> ah, fifth, mid, mid last century, flights were for the super rich or non-existent. Mid last, mm -hmm. imagine the 50s or the 60s, um, you wouldn't be taking a flight. I mean, you, you'd be going by ship. But anyway, <clears throat> um, that's the last time it worked and it was easy. Okay, so I advise everyone to delete the word easy from your dictionary. It's not going to be this way. The whole fact that we are setting events like this and having to explain complex regulations in simple language to you means that this whole industry is not easy. And this is because the government has designed it only for the smartest and most competitive to survive. And this is what Australian immigration is like. Um, however, as a note of optimism, I think that new financial year has a big number in it. And this is a big note of optimism. Even though immigration is generally difficult with the quotas that we have for next financial year, 190,000, and that's only permanent, student visas are uncapped, unlimited. And I think that people who are competitive, people who do the right thing, people who do not give up and use the right advice will be able to stand a chance. Yeah, sure, sure. <clears throat> and uh, the last one, uh, what is the pros and cons in the fast track application? So the advantage and disadvantage in the fast track uh, application. I think it's a fast track assessment, assessment that the question is about, right? Mm. Yeah, you just pay more. This is the con. <laughs> <laughs> and the pro is that you get it faster. Yeah. I don't know what to add to my answer. It's, it's, it's very in general, but X for applications. So, yeah. It might be this question is uh, like if stu if uh, you are doing the <coughs> um, just a fast track application, might be he's asking about if uh, you are holding 500 student visa and wanted to do fast track then uh, you may not get 485. Oh, actually. OK. Well, yeah, might be that yeah, that's I what he is trying to ask. Yeah, yeah, look, don't do any fast tracks on student visas. Yeah. And I think the education provider will never approve a fast track on a student Definitely, visa either yeah. because yeah. it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, uh, yeah you, they need to have you as, as a full time student for two years so that you could get your 485 and whatever. Um, they are very stringent with 500 visa holders because for 500 you need to show compliance for people on yeah. 485 you don't need to show any compliance because they are not on a student visa yeah mm. yeah okay so i think uh that's uh that's all the question we have and uh, it's also the time we finish the session so everyone hope you enjoyed the session and met the most of our team expertise and um if you have uh, more concerns or more uh, um, questions, please uh, reach our team. I post their emails there and uh, we'll see you uh, at the next session uh, for tomorrow and on Friday. So thank you, Kosya, again. Thank you, Manu, again. Thank you. Uh, it's thank you so very much, informative you. and very useful. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank yeah. you, Thank you very much. See you. Thanks, bye everyone. bye, everyone, for now. Thanks, bye. Um, see thanks you, all organizers. Thank you. Thanks to uh, our grateful audience and see you soon. Yeah. Thank you. Have yeah. a great evening. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.